Hi, welcome along to DR Sports Roundtable Talk. Um, back again for another episode. We've got Nikki from West Ham Fan TV, big West Ham fan. Of course, Flex here from United View, Man United, and Lewis from uh, Chelsea Fan TV. Of course, big Chelsea fan, of course, you know, AFTV, Arsenal. <laughs> right? <laughs> but listen, you know what, guys? What I wanted to discuss today is something that we've all... I've seen your guys' videos. I've been chatting with you guys all season. We've all moaned about this. Every fan's moaned about it. I guess every fan moans about it anyway. But this season, it seems to be worse than ever. And that is the officiating in the Premier League. The, the referees this season, the refereeing decisions. I don't know, are we going over the top with this? Or is there a problem with the officiating in the Premier League, Flex? It's a mess. It's a mess. It's, it's so inconsistent. There's no accountability. Um, there's no one coming out to explain decisions. They come out with these, these, these set of rules and, and try and make us understand that, okay, if X happens, then Y will happen as a result of that. That doesn't get followed. You're getting referees now. The whole point of the VAR situation and people at Stanley what, Stop, Stockley Park, Stop whatever it is, Park. don't know what park it is, wherever they are, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's to enable referees to have more independence and do this. All that's happening now is you're seeing referees go over to screens. As soon as the decision's made for a referee to go to a screen, forget about it. Don't even go and look. You're going to change your mind because they're too scared to go against their employers. Um, and then they're so quick to try to silence the managers and find them. And when, when you're seeing an absolute disgrace of, of decisions, um, and it's not good enough. And another thing I will say as well, and I'm not afraid to say it, Big club bias. Big club bias. I'm, uh, whether it's Man United, yeah, there was one. Arsenal. There was one the other day, right? Now, it's a close one in the game against West Ham, right yeah. at the end. It's a big goal because, mm. you know, you're both battling for the top four. It's given us onside. Mm. Wait, let me get both of your opinions on it. Did you think it was onside? Did you think Initially it was onside? I didn't, but I've looked it back and I think it was. But the problem I had with it is that they... They looked at it for 10 seconds. I've seen them going into these goals for three minutes, mm. four minutes, looking to see, oh, is a toe, and going back to see if there was a foul in the build-up. That's, that's my problem. It was onside. Mm. Um, okay. And, and, and so they got it to right be, To, to mm. be honest So they you, got it right, because there was a they, lot of controversy around yeah, that one. This is where I'm trying I, to... I, I, yeah. but, this is where I'm also trying to put a balance on it, right? Because... That one caused a lot of controversy. But that's the thing that they should have yeah. The thing is with this whole rule change, the thing what was happening, remember when everyone was offside for a toe and offside for an armpit hair yeah. and stuff like that? What we're saying as football fans is, all right, cool, forget all yeah. that. When is that minus, why are we giving offside for that's that? Correct. You're not gaining Absolutely or losing correct. an advantage. Yeah, but that's what they did. And they yeah, got no, that right. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's fine. But I'm talking about, there was, there so, was well, a so why, Sorry, to, sorry yeah. to go back to that flick. So, so why was there so much controversy about it? Why were they saying people because are, accusing the refs? And there's the, other because goals, they've actually got that right. Other, because there's other goals as tight as that that get ruled out. Yeah. I look at, I look at uh, Harry Kane had one ruled out. Uh, was it against Leicester? I can't remember. Yeah. Is it? And that you was know, tight. Stupid. Mm, yeah. um, Southampton has had it done to them before. Mar Every, everything. The one that I'll go back to is the Mane one. The Mane against Everton. I don't know whether you ever saw that. It was his like, bum cheek. Yes. That yes, was yes, outside, yes, you know? yes, it was, yes. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, we, we as fans, stupid. we want to give the attacker the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Even with the Cavani. If, it, if he's put his arm forward and, he's, and this bit's offside, yeah. who cares? Yeah. You know what I mean? His feet, you know, it's, it's, you couldn't see that in real time. And I think they need to bring common sense back and I've got no problem. The issue I've got with the Cavani go is that they will look at something for four minutes but they didn't look at that for 10 seconds. That's mm. the issue. Mm. I, want, I want them to give the benefit of the doubt and it's consistency. It's not there, you just need yeah. consistency. You, with the consistency. I mean I saw one the other day for instance. Um, it was Southampton versus Man City. Mm. I can't remember the player but <laughs> for me red card all day long. Right? I looked on that the, the player he had his foot up, studs caught the, uh, um, the City player, I can't remember who it was. Even afterwards, he had a big scar on his foot, on his I leg. I think it was the right? port, yeah, yeah, port. It was the yeah, port, yeah. yeah. Right? They looked at it, and they looked at it, and they looked at it, and then they said, no, nah, actually, not a red card. I was thinking, if that was Granite Xhaka, he'd be in prison for that. You know what I mean? This, I, I looked at it, I said, there was no consistent... 
it is that lack of consistency, isn't it? I, I think there's also like. Uh, there's a thing where some players, if they're notorious for being in those sorts of situations, they don't get given the benefit of the doubt. Like, we'll use the Granite Xhaka one as an example. Can also go back and I'm going to put my team's foot in it, like the Harry Kane situation against Chelsea. Mm. Like, the more you look at it... So, yeah, yeah, really so that's enough. another one. It's not far. Yeah, Is that, not you know, that was the push... Yeah. Um, when he scored the goal, yeah. yeah. he's, he's more off balance than yeah. anything. Is that? A, is that? A, it's not a foul. It's, that but a it's foul? because Harry Kane's known for being a notorious little cheat when they, it comes to it. They don't give him the benefit of the doubt, and it but, happens sometimes. But that's not a new thing. That's been going for as long as football's been going. You used to see players like De Canio. He's got a reputation, a bit of a diver. Mm. He'd dive in the penalty box or go over in the penalty box. Sometimes the penalties weren't given. Mm. But you know, before VAR, you, you, you get them players. But I think what the problem is, I think the whole problem with, with the refereeing situation, for one, I think now referees are starting to rely on the technology, which I think is, is absolute. Get them off the pit. If they're going to rely on the technology, don't have them. You know, referee everything via a, a whistle from mm. a tannoy and with someone in Stockley Park. Wherever. What's the point? Because I think they're becoming too reliant. They don't want no accountability. And I, don't, I, I think this goes back way before VAR. I think this goes back to when they stopped doing them interviews and, and having to speak to public. And yeah, they're so they, sheltered. Uh, yeah, they, they, they're so sheltered. They, they, they basically could do what they want and get away with it mm. without any accountability. But bringing VAR in now, they're even going more into their shell because they're so worried about the big decisions that are getting wrong. It's so under scrutiny. Do you like VAR? No. Do you like VAR? No, I, I tried to fight its case for a long time because I was saying, actually, if it takes just to see a replay to see that's clearly this or it's clearly that, it should actually be quite easy. But as we can see, the people using the technology, that's so you the, don't that's think, the you don't think it helps the game? I think it needs to be simplified and the people using it. What I, what I was going to suggest, actually, I, I think we're seeing people who've never played the game at the highest level using these things and making big decisions. And I think the understanding of the mechanics of how somebody falls, when, when your foot is raised because you was going to make a tackle, then you try to pull it. Just the understanding of the mechanics of mm. footballers, I, I think mm. is wrong because we're I, seeing red cards for like, come on, he hasn't meant to stamp on him there, but you've slowed it down. Yes, he's caught him a little bit above the ankle and the ball's actually not there. But if you play the game, you understand what I a think, natural action do is. You, do, do you like VAR? I like VAR in Europe as opposed to VAR in England, but I agree with what you're saying where the problem isn't VAR in general, it's the people that are using yeah, it. Like, yeah. I don't understand how you can sit in a room with six plasma screen TVs, you've basically got the rule book in your hand, you've got all the time in the world to figure out the decision and you still can't make the right one. Mm. It makes no sense. I, I, because p personally myself, I think VAR was needed, right? Because of the daylight robberies that were happening. And yeah, plus as well, like it's, it's, it's not even just sometimes daylight robbery. I just think that the technology, we've moved on so much, right? So it just seemed, it used to seem ridiculous to me before that we could see in a replay so obvious mistake, mm. right? And the referees or, or somebody didn't have access to True. then say, you know what, that's yeah. ridiculous, that decision. He was miles on side or he's miles offside or whatever. So for me, it's a good thing, but I do agree it's the people that are, with any bit of technology, it's the people that are running it. Mm. And it's so inconsistent. And it's just, you know, I think that's the problem. I don't have a, other sports seem to do it quite well. Cricket yeah. use other technology and but well. cricket is, you know, it's quite a hard thing to judge sometimes mm. when somebody's LBW, but they seem to do but it very it's well. It's these big organizations, Robbie. And, and one of the problems is, is that You've got somebody that sets out rules without really testing them. And I know they tested it in Europe and all that sort of thing. And then everyone's whinging about it and they go, oh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll do it this way instead. Everyone, it's just confusion. It just ends up making everything worse. Mm. Like, but then you, you know what? You, um, you make a great point when you talk about Europe. And even I've been watching the African Cup of Nations, yeah? And the decision, apart from the, the fact that they added all that time on in their game. <laughs> that was a one-off. Right? But that was a one-off, right? But the decisions when they've used VAR, I think they've been done it very it's well. It's like that in the World Cup as well. And when the player... It's and when, everywhere yeah, everywhere so and when the referee yeah, has everywhere. gone to the screen, it's not been a foregone conclusion mm. that he's going to just go with what, whatever... What I would you know? say as well is that sometimes things can look worse in slow motion. 
Oh, loads of things that way. Like, so that's that's you, can, you can see something in slow motion 20 times, yeah. and you think, oh, but you see it in fast motion, it's, it's nothing. It's not, exactly. And, and I think, like, you, it's hard to gauge the impact, the intention, exactly. you know, all of that sort of stuff. It, it, it's so difficult to, to gauge it through technology. So we, you we start over analysing, that's the problem. Yeah, are we too harsh on the referees then? No, I don't is it, think is it so. That we're too no, harsh no, no, because they've got. This is where, and then back to the referees, and why we're not being too harsh is, if you've given a decision, right, that you believe is the right one, what we're seeing is, is your employer saying, "Listen, Robbie, mate, nah, mate, think you got that wrong." We're seeing them not have the guts to say, "No, no, no, no." I still believe in my on my refereeing instinct, which you're talking about, which 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 is the old school thing. Of I got this decision right, and actually, even though I've looked at it, I still believe that. And I, what we're seeing is an automatic yeah. turnover of decision as soon as these guys. But is there an automatic with us as fans, where it's just like because a decision doesn't go our way, the emotional attachment of our team, because a yeah. decision doesn't go our way, that's marginal. Well, we're immediately no, the refs are cheat or well, oh, we do, we don't know what he's doing. You well, know, how many just, times have we been to a game? But let me just say this. Hold on, hold on, hold on one second before you, you say that, right? I'll ask all you guys, all three of you. We all go to games. We watch a lot of football live. How many times have you been to a game and you're singing, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're doing, referee? Yeah, that's for fouls. Can, that's for, that's right? for normal but fouls. And you you, you come home and you, 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 you watch it on TV yeah. and you're like, ooh. But I'll be honest with you. He was actually right. More since VAR come in. Because no, there's no excuses now. Yeah. There's no excuses. Good point. Yeah. You know? But the, 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 I think that one of the issues is, is, is this, is that you've got this technology, everything's open to interpretation, everything looks worse in slow motion, but I think a lot of the time is, maybe it's not the referee, but I think when you're looking at these split decisions and these, you know, these, these hairline offsides and someone's toes offside or someone's you know, elbows offside, I think it's them trying to justify it. I honestly do, because if you go back to before VAR, there could be an offside. If it's blatantly offside, if it's two foot offside, you're gonna you're gonna win. But if someone's a hair offside, you're not gonna say nothing. But I say again, nothing. Again, Nikki, is this I'm trying to it's hard to defend refs, right? Yeah. But I'm trying to hear there are some things I look at, right, and I think to myself, as fans, we're straight on the road. So mm. fans and pundits I hear all the time saying, um, you know they got this one where they said to the, um, the linesman or the assistant referees, they say, keep your flag down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see a lot of incidents sometimes where a player's run through, it looks a mile offside, they've kept the flag down, the player scores and then they put the flag up. You hear the pundit say, well, that is absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. ridiculous. Why can't he just put his flag yeah, just up? just following the rules. Right? Yeah. But... Right? You've got I saw to, a game yeah. the other day. Well, I was at the game the other day when we played Liverpool <coughs> and Jota scored. I'm like, when he scored, I was like, ah, miles offside, man. Look at <laughs> I, I was like, where I was sat, yeah, 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 I was exactly. like, he's miles off. Yeah, fine. <laughs> VAR check. Yeah. Right? The, guy, the linesman had kept his arm flag down. Yeah. So that would have been an occasion where a lot of people would be like, get the flag up. Yeah. He kept it down. He was onside. Yeah. So I remember an incident with Old Trafford. I was going to say this. With Aubameyang. Remember Aubameyang oh. that time when... Oh, when again, he, threw, the, he yeah. threw it to him, yeah. Right? Aubameyang, it looked, he looked miles offside. The yeah, fans, yeah, yeah. Arsenal fans barely celebrated. Yeah. They did a VAR check. He was onside. Yeah. So... Us as fans sometimes, that's what I'm saying, is it out of emotional attachment? To those, those ones, what you're saying yeah. right in that there, that, that is 100%. Because like I say, whether it's transfers, whether it's the team not doing good, whether it's referee decisions, we're emotionally invested in our teams. You see, like, thing, the players make a mistake, you see, and fans... Yeah, so are we unfair on. to the no, refs some, in, in those moments, I would say yes. Because you look at, I remember at Old Trafford earlier on in the season, when, when Fred stepped on De Gea, and Smith Rowe scored, the yeah. ref didn't actually blow, and he blew after the ball had gone in, then you could see actually, yeah, it should be a goal to Arsenal. Mm. Whereas if he would have just saw the goalkeeper on the floor for all had gone on but it. But all your so fans were singing, you don't know what you're doing. Exactly. So, <laughs> no, no, so and, and I wasn't one of them. I was one of the ones where I say, well, I have obviously been the screen, Old Trafford, no screens. Um, <laughs> but I'm saying when I watch this back, I need to have seen De Gea do something silly. Or, and that was the case. It was, it was a calamitous, wasn't it? Mm. And it should have been a goal. Mm. So those things, but where people do get onto the refs, and I think where they're right to do it, is things of the generic play, nothing to do with VR. So you're talking about accumulations of fouls. How's that not a yellow card? Or why is that a yellow card, but that one isn't a yellow card? Why have you just sent him off? But... It, it looked very Consist innocuous. And why is it actually not yeah. going to VAR? What, what? The consistency about yeah. normal decisions. The What's way to solve that 
is to listen to them and, and listen to their reasoning. I was going to say, I was going to ask you guys for solutions. Now, that is one that's been spoken about a lot, that might the referees up so that and they do it again they do it in other sports like american football and that accountability where he explains his decision but with football fans would that help or would that yeah, make it problem, would that make it worse here's the thing i i'm all for that but i think one of the biggest problems is first off there's massive tv money in football and a lot of those games would be televised and we know what it can get when you don't agree with a referee's decision there's going to be hella swear words and everything and that's going to become a problem in itself <laughs> I also think, like, I do fully agree that the, one of the biggest problems is that the referees are not held accountable at all. They can make a decision, awful decision, just run off to the dressing room, you never hear from them again. God forbid a player or a manager so says what, a word about them in the press conference, yeah. they're getting fired. So what do you want? You want the referee to come out at the end and explain it? Yeah, I think because you can't really account for what the players are going to say or not because they could end up swearing or something, it'll kill the TV deals. But after the game, they can come out and Is they that can... fair on that guy, though, that one ref, right? He's had to make every he's gonna have to make these big decisions, right? Players have to. And then he's gonna to have to come out at the end and say, oh, Players have to. Just, just say your reasons behind making that decision. Agree or disagree, at least you're a referee, not a politician, not Boris Johnson. I, 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 I think I know, he ain't gotta come out and justify everything. You, it goes the other way around where you can't even say when they do something wrong. Like you could have a referee that has an awful performance, like one of the worst refereeing performances of the season. Manager says one thing about them, they're gonna be the ones with more consequences than the referee. And All that's right. the reason why they can do it. Right, let me go I, I, I think Mike in. I, Mike I, I, honestly gonna, think I was going to say, I'm going to go around the table and I'm going to ask you one thing you want to change. So one big thing you'd like to change that you think would improve football regarding refereeing and officiating. Nicky. Miking up the ref and, and making him accountable for what he's doing and listening in real time what his thought process is. <coughs> I think it would give a lot more understanding for everybody. You know, they, sometimes you, you look at them and you think, what are you watching? You know, mm. what are you mm -hmm. watching? How have you come to How that decision? How have you come exactly. to that decision? There's, there's 60,000 people in this stadium who can all see one thing and you've seen another. And if they could, listen, well, I was, my eye was on this player because mm. something's going you'd, you'd understand a little bit more. Okay, what about you? Mine would be uh, the way the technology is used. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's wrongly implemented and sometimes over-analyzed, so I've, I, would, I would like a change in terms of maybe, maybe ex-pros. Can, can we not get ex-pros? I know it's... Oh, in stocky pop. Yeah, I know, I know it's difficult to say you know, how many ex-pros want to be refs or video refs, I get that, but some form yeah, of pilot... Well, there's a lot of them out of work, so I'm sure, well, I'm sure yeah, you'd find yeah, a load of them up for it. Just some, some, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a plan yeah. when you think about it, I you think, know what I think mean? More you could train more them up as well and... At least one as an advisor. Yeah, something, yeah. yeah. An advisory map, something, because I feel like when it's you get Clattenburg like or that. you get Dermot... Ga uh, what's his name, Dermot? Gallagher. Gallagher. I say Dermot O'Leary there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Dermot. laughs> Might as well be sometimes. <laughs> and then you get the other guy on BT, who always... Um, Stuart Atwell, yeah. whatever it is, yeah. Hmm. It's like, it's just the referees union, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah. we're all together, and I get it, it is, you see from Sunday League, right, we've all been there, it's a, re it's a difficult job. It's difficult. But we just want all right. accountability. What's your change? For me, it would be post-match interviews. I think the referee, like we already said, should have to come out and explain certain decisions if it's necessary to do so. But I also think managers and players should be allowed to speak about referees if they don't agree about the yeah, decision. Obviously, this, like, yeah. if they're abusive or anything, fair enough, you can issue sanctions wherever necessary. But if it's like, I remember Charlie Austin interview after a Southampton game, yeah. he was fuming, but he channeled it respectfully and he still stayed, stated his case. Still got fined for it. What did he but say? He said VAR on him. Nobody wants to no, get no, rid of it. No, it wasn't time, was it? about VAR. He was saying like the referee killed a very good game oh, over right, a decision yeah. that didn't matter. Something along the lines mm. of that. He was went on like a two, three minute rant, but it wasn't disrespectful or abusive. It mm. was just real, and he still got fined for it. That's what I think the problem is because the referees should be held accountable. Okay, you know one that I change right that to me came into the spotlight in the African Cup of Nations, but it bugs me all the time in football is that one of the, the clock. Remember we used to have the famous Fergie time yeah, yeah, yeah. back in the day. I can't for the life of me understand why there can't just be a clock up in the stadium and every time the game stops, mm. the it clock stops. stops. Because you've been, you've been I, here for 14 hours. Yeah, so what, so what are you saying? Though? No, 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 no. Like no. basketball where you have a stopwatch. Stop so, so, so basically... So it's like throw-ins, inbounds, corners... You, you, you no, no, so basically, that. even if it's the ref who's doing it, right? So the ref... Stops Controls playing, it, yeah. but when for what? No, as soon on. as stop. Hold on, the ref stops play during the game, right? 
I can never work out when the game comes to an end. I'm thinking when the 90 minutes are up, it's a lottery. Yeah, what yeah, the ref's yeah, going to yeah. add on? It yeah. could be two minutes. It could be three minutes. When you know it's then, at least six. you know a game like <laughs> we, we, we played against Burnley the other day. They slowed it down. They wasted time. They, but there was only like four minutes mm. added on. Then I've had been at other games where there's been barely a foul. It's like six minutes. Mm. Then I'm not, so to me to clarify that. Maybe it's hooked up to the referees. What? So every time he stops it, so when it gets to the end of the game, we but it's know. It's actually a job for the fourth official in itself. The ref's yeah. got so much going on. All you have to do mate, is stand official. on the side and add the time on. Yeah, that's and the then, job. And, and then we can and see. Still get it wrong. We can see in real time. <laughs> that's another thing. We can wrong. see in real time how much time is actually because I just think they make it up after the time. I really yeah. do. But that, that, and, that, and again, it's open. To would games go too long though? Well, no, but then people stop wasting time. Yeah. Mm. You know, but I think that could be solved with miking. Because when he says how much of time you're going to add on, he could go, well, we'll add on six minutes because it was three substitutes and yeah. there was a two minute stoppage. And yeah. You know, I've seen, you see games sometimes and there's like three minutes of added time, right? And then the managers of the other teams will make like two subs. They trot off really slowly that. And then the reality of it is the referees only played like about two minutes. Mm, yeah. No, you know, so I, that's my, that's my, but I want to find out from you guys. What is your, what thing would you like to change about the referees? And you know what, there was one thing I forgot to ask all of you and I'm going to do it quickly. It's going to be one word, you know, your favourite referee. You've got to give one. Can you come back to me? Your favourite? <laughs> oh, um, right, Michael, Michael Oliver. Michael Oliver. Oliver. Favourite. What, English? English. I don't know none of them. I'll be honest. I've I mean, uh, You've got to pick one. Uh, Oh, probably Michael Oliver. The one who annoys me the least, I would say, is Andre Mariner. Mariner, yeah. It's a good There's show. something about him I think is just okay. John Moss. <laughs> I just... Oh. <laughs> John Moss is... Maybe I should have said that. the yeah. words. Yeah. yeah. I'll say... I'll, I'll oh, say, that's, I'll easy. say Actually, that's easy. Yeah, I'll, least, I'll, yeah. I'll ask for you. Uh, but mine's Oliver probably is the best as well. The worst, probably Moss. He's... <laughs> Oh, he's Anthony Taylor. Taylor. The other guy. And, uh, Anthony Taylor. I mean, every Chelsea yeah. fan Anthony doesn't like Anthony Taylor. Taylor. Kevin yeah. Friend, right? Kevin, Kevin Friend. Friend, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's the bald guy's name? Anthony Taylor. That's Anthony Taylor. No, it's not. Oh, it's not. He's bald though. Andy no, Taylor. it's not. It's the Spurs fan who everyone says he's the oh, Spurs fan. How am I forgetting his name? Oh. Are you thinking of Mike Dean? Mike Dean! Mike Dean, yeah. Yeah. Mike, Dean. Mike Dean, everybody's favourite ref. He's the most famous one he is. Mike Dean. Yeah, Who would be a name. referee? <laughs> Who would be a referee? It's a really tough job, but mm. what do you guys think? Do you think that fans just give referees a hard time? Do you think that VAR has been a good thing or a bad thing for the game? Or do you just feel that it's the people behind it? What about Flex's recommendation that, you know, bring in some ex-players as those sort of consultants and experts that could work along the referees, alongside the referees at Stockley Park so that we get the right decisions? We'd love to hear from you. This one is a really contentious issue. Love to hear from you guys. Leave it in the comments. Also, like this video and subscribe here to DR Sports. And thank you very much to our panel. And we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>